And welcome to the behind the scenes for our homemade reservoir dog scene with sock puppets. Let's take a look at how the magic was made. So the first thing we have to do when we're making a scene entirely out of sock puppets is make all of the characters. I've treated these like caricatures. You want to get the hair right, you want to get the eyes, the face, and obviously the clothes. Our main guy here, he's leading up this meeting in the warehouse, is of course Joe. He's bald, so he just had a sock head. And he has a pretty nice suit. Just found a vest that had the right shapes to it and the right color, the right shade of gray. Cut all the little pieces, glued them together, made a little tie, put some dots on it. We realized after doing the One Direction trailer that once you put the cloth around your arm, it's hard to get the sock off and on. So on this one, I decided to just glue it in the front. That way the sock still stretches. You can put your hand in it and then you just tighten the whole thing up tape it in the back and you're good to go. Also with Joe wearing this suit, we wanted to make sure that he had the big broad shoulders. So instead of pulling it all the way tight around the back, we kind of like poofed it out a little bit and then taped it. So that really gave it that suit look. Our next main guy is Mr. Pink, Steve Buscemi. Of course, he's got the big crazy eyes, which everybody loves. And then he has a little mustache here. You can't really see it because he's a sock puppet, but he does have a goatee. He's got a couple little details around the eyes. So I used a brand new Sharpie, so it was really, really sharp and just took a look at the picture. Thought, okay, he's got the bags, got a line here, and above the eyes a little bit. And you don't want to overdo it because it can start looking crazy. So it's kind of like, what are the minimal amounts of lines that will help sell the shape? You want to be able to look at it and know who it is. Really wanted to make sure I got the hair right on him. Flips out this way, so I used the pipe cleaners. A little easier to mold. And then, cool Hawaiian shirt. Made a little collar, made a little t-shirt. These clothes all came from normal size shirts from the thrift store. You kind of have to look what you're trying to match, but also scale it down. So I'm looking at a regular Hawaiian shirt. I want to make sure it has a smaller pattern, so that way when I put it on the smaller guy, the pattern doesn't come out too big. Steve Buscemi had a very light shirt. It was more yellows and whites. Then we got Mr. Brown. This is Quentin Tarantino, so he has a giant forehead. So I actually stuffed a bunch of extra fabric in there trying to get his forehead to just like stick up really high. Also a Hawaiian shirt, got one that was almost identical to the actual shirt he's wearing, so that was awesome. Mr. White, really easy, wears a white t-shirt, done. He had very specific curly hair. I came up with this little technique to take the yarn and wrap it around a pencil. You glue it while it's on the pencil, just in a straight line, then you can slide the whole thing off and you got yourself a nice little curly cue. So I made a bunch of those and then I just attached those in the right places all along the head. Mr. Orange, played by Tim Roth, he has some really sweet 90s hair, so just use the yarn, let it flow, kind of like a parted bowl cut. I went with the lady's eyes on this one. They don't have to be lady's eyes, they could be Tim Roth's eyes, because he sort of has like the big eyelids, so I thought that those were just perfect. This actual puppet with those eyes glued on was left over from our One Direction females. I really like this outfit because it's real leather, spared no expense. He's got a really great dolly in to really get to soak in the 90s-ness. Nice guy, Eddie, just wearing a black collared shirt with a little gray collar that we attached. And then he has a little gold medallion. So we just cut a little cardboard or paper and a little wire, spray painted it gold, attached that on there, and added some of the chest hair, of course. He has some really curly hair too. So I used the pipe cleaner, used the same technique as for Mr. White. I used a thicker marker on this, and then I just wrapped the pipe cleaner around the marker. I just got a perm. Some of these guys turn their heads in the shot, so I was careful to see which ones needed a good profile too. So like for him, I wanted to make sure that I got the big sideburns, so I just used another curly poof right here. Then we've got Mr. Blonde. Again, the curly hair technique coming in pretty handy. We just didn't happen to have black yarn around, so I used the brown and then spray painted it. Made sure that his eyebrows are really specific. This dude has amazing eyebrows. They go up in the middle, he uses them in every shot he's ever in. And who can forget Mr. Blue? Probably everybody. He's got actually a pretty cool corduroy brown jacket, which I want for my fitness. And he's got a little white button-up shirt. Minimal hair, but it's kind of like a comb over. It goes around the top, so I just laid those kind of far back. And then still didn't look quite right. So looking at the picture, I'm like, what else makes this guy? And it's that his hair is kind of long, like in the back, it kind of sticks out in a weird way. So I just frayed some more yarn and stuck it out the back. And then a very light mustache. I think it's more of a blonde color, but I just lightly went with the Sharpie and added that. So now that the characters were set, we needed to make some of the background elements. Luckily, it's a pretty easy setup. They're in a warehouse. It's kind of just white, but we made some extra doors, windows, some chains, a ladder, just some stuff to put in the background, kind of out of focus. And then also Joe stands in front of a chalkboard. Ah! 
that was just cardboard, spray painted, drew on the details. We got pretty accurate with that. This is the diamond room. It's now just about nailing the performances. So we looked at each shot very carefully, tried to get the positions of their faces just right, get everyone lined up, who's in front, who's in back, and then we could see what we were doing in a monitor and see the scene at the same time. And so we could just do it over and over until we really learned all the little head moves and the arm movements. Lip sync is really important on this one, keeping it really tight, really fast, hitting the big syllables. If I was doing the mouth movements and the head movements, John would be crunched below me here with some wires. So he was just focusing on the arm movement. So when you see it all come together, it just totally brings them to life. It looks so awesome. The arms are pretty much just attached to the sides. We just took some coat hangers, bent them a little bit so there's something to grip, and you just tape that right to the hand. Actually, they don't have hands, but the end of the arm. My hands. Where my goddamn hands? So when we're looking at the computer screen, we're facing the camera and we see the monitor. It's not like a mirror image. It's kind of in reverse, if that makes sense. So. When you move one way, it's moving the opposite way on the monitor. So you had to really learn like, wait, okay, when I tilt this way, it goes this way. And it was like a brain teaser the whole time. When you wanna go, oh, let me get further in screen. It's like, what? Let me adjust, oh, I just uh, away. Normally we shoot everything kind of just handheld and we pretend that there's a dolly or that the camera's on some kind of fancy rig. Sometimes the handheld, it still has a handheld look. It's kind of moving around. This time we did bust out my homemade slider, which I made out of some electrical pipe and just some PVC pieces. Most of the opening shots are really, really slow, dramatic camera moves on the puppets. So we wanted to make sure we really got the cinematic look of these. This scene has no music or sound effects, but there's a lot of voices in this one. You want to get the impersonations just right. Yeah, it's easy for you to say you're Mr. White. You have a cool sounding name. So I actually attempted to do all of the voices myself, because I normally do all the voices for these, and they were okay. My way or the highway. But we know this guy named Piat who does these amazing impersonations on YouTube, so we called him up asked if he would come in and help do these voices for us, and his Steve Buscemi is amazing. You're Mr. White. You got a cool sounding name. The trick that I found, it was a discovery. I was in the shower. For some reason, I was in an Austin Powers mood. Austin Powers, baby. Get rid of the British accent, and suddenly you've got the same teeth situation going on. It's that's basically Steve Buscemi. And while he was here, I went ahead and asked if he could just do the Joe voice too. And of course, it was perfect also. Don't you guys get the goddamn message? My father was abusive. This is just an impression of my dad. It's very sad. No, I'm kidding. It's my mom. The voices really have to carry this scene because it's all about the dialogue. So Piat really nailed it and helped bring the puppets to life. And that's our homemade sock puppet reservoir dog scene. I totally love this movie. So I hope you guys like our sock puppet version. Uh, let me know what other Tarantino scenes you might want to see us try because we're uh, totally down for doing more. And uh, subscribe because we've got new episodes every single Tuesday. Sometimes they're sock puppets, most of the time they're not. Let us know if you want us to try some other techniques even. So uh, we'll see you next week. I'm Quentin Tarantino. Hey, you better hang it up right. Who are your names? Mr. Brown, Mr. White, Mr. Blonde, Mr. Blue, Mr. Orange, and Mr. Pink.